So last week, I made a video discussing what I thought the NBA greatest big threes of all time were. And when I was making that video, it really got me thinking, what are some NBA big threes or super teams that actually failed when being built? Because there have been some crazy NBA teams that were built, but they never really had much success. So we're going to get into that in this video. I hope you guys enjoy and let's get it started. Number 10, the 2013-14 Brooklyn Nets. To give you some background story, the New Jersey Nets shook things up big time back in 2012 when they made a city change, migrating back to New York to be dubbed the Brooklyn Nets. With their arrival to a new city, a new arena and new jerseys, the Nets made a serious push to become known as a championship contender by trading away a ton of their future assets for championship experience. Aging veterans Kevin Garnett, Paul Pierce and Jason Terry arrived from the Boston Celtics to join the already dynamic nucleus of Darren Williams, Joe Johnson and Brooke Lopez. The Nets would also make sure that they had a solid bench duo by signing Andre Karolinko and Sean Livingston and selecting Nets legend Jason Kidd as their head coach. All transactions resulted in the Nets having the highest payroll in the entire league. The moves would unfortunately not translate on the court too well. The Nets started the season poorly, with Jason Kidd having trouble adjusting to his new job as a coach, and injuries just damaged the Nets' starting lineup when Brook Lopez had to shut down early in the season to have foot surgery. The Nets would still be sort of impressive despite their chemistry issues, but they would still lose to the Miami Heat in the second round of the playoffs anyway, so yeah, the Nets are definitely a super team that failed. But what makes it worse for the Nets is what they gave up for the future. They lost a bunch of future first round picks that I'm pretty sure they'd rather have right now. Because obviously the last one left is Brooke Lopez as Darren Williams, Joe Johnson, Kevin Garnett, Paul Pierce and Jason Terry, they've all gone somewhere else right now. So. I'm sure they'd rather have kept their future first round picks. Number 9, the 2007-08 Houston Rockets. The Houston Rockets had a formidable 1-2 punch in Tracy McGrady and Yao Ming for several seasons, but unfortunately without a talented group of role players surrounding them. The Rockets time in and time out would disappoint with first round exits, and with the duo of Yao Ming and Tracy McGrady, you'd expect more than first round exits. The Rockets front office then decided to shake things up a little bit, firing head coach Jeff Van Gundy and hiring a more successful offensive minded coach in Rick Adelman. The Rockets would then move quickly by beefing up their roster with talent they hoped would take the pressure off Tracy McGrady and Yao Ming. The Rockets would sign all-star point guard and Rockets fan favorite Steve Francis, the franchise, who ironically was traded for Tracy McGrady years earlier. The Rockets would further add bench firepower by signing volume scorer Bonzi Wells and Mike James as well as trading for Louis Scholar. The team would unfortunately be hit by injuries. As, as you all know, Tracy McGrady and Yao Ming pretty much suffered injuries their entire career, and Steve Francis also had to deal with injuries. All three of these guys would be hampered by injuries, and they would be hampered with injuries for most of the seasons, and they would all miss significant time on the court. The Rockets would however post an impressive 22 game win streak during the season, but ultimately they would fall in the first round again, as their super team was depleted by injuries. Number 7 the 2015-16 Oklahoma City Thunder. We all know about this year's Oklahoma City Thunder. The fact that they lost to the Golden State Warriors three games to one is still incredible to me personally. They only had to win one game of three chances, but they blew it. And this is why this team didn't advance to the NBA Finals, simply because they choked. And this choke could also be the reason why ultimately, Kevin Durant left the Oklahoma City Thunder. The fact that he left to join the team that beat him in the conference finals still amazes me, but I think we should all be over that right now. Well, until the season starts, of course. Anyway, with a roster of Durant, Westbrook, Ibaka, and a big man presence in Steven Adams, that is a pretty damn good team. Not quite a super team, but with a roster of two of the five best players in the league, this team deserves to be on this list. Number 6, the 2004-05 Indiana Pacers. The Indiana Pacers had a breakthrough season in 2004, with new coach Rick Carlisle taking his team led by All-Stars Ron Artest, Reggie Miller and Jermaine O'Neal into the playoffs with the best record in the league at 61-21. and 21. 
The team made it all the way to the Eastern Conference Finals, losing to a Detroit Pistons team in six games. The Pistons would actually go on to win the championship that season, but we're talking about the 2004-05 Indiana Pacers. So after the 04 season, the Pacers were eager to build on their success by adding to their team already strong lineup, acquiring shooting guard Steven Jackson on their team. The following season, the Pacers started off strong, and during a game versus the same Pistons team that they already had bad blood with, they made a statement by blowing the reigning champions out. What everyone remembers about this game though was the infamous brawl at the Palace, or the Malice in the Palace, where a fight between Ben Wallace and Ron Artest turned into an all-out riot where Artest and the Pacers players would go into the stands to fight with the fans, which is unbelievable and I've never seen anything like it to be honest. The ultimate aftermath of the brawl would derail this team, with harsh suspensions to Artest, O'Neal and Jackson killing their championship hopes. And unfortunately, Reggie Miller never got a ring. Number 5. The 1996-97 Houston Rockets Having failed to secure an NBA championship with his previous super team, the Suns' Charles Barkley packed his bags in the summer of 1996 and moved to Texas to join the Houston Rockets. This Houston Rockets team was only one year removed from their back-to-back -back championships. Surely, all they needed was an undersized aging power forward to get them in the title hunt. And at that time, Charles Barkley wasn't actually all that bad, even though he was aging a little bit. Sadly, no. Although impressive on paper, the Rockets roster of future Hall of Famers with Clyde Drexler, Hakeem Olajuwon, and Charles Barkley weren't able to pull it together on the court. Too old and too slow. They were defeated by the Utah Jazz in the Western Conference Finals. But even if they had beaten the Jazz, well, the Utah Jazz actually lost to a Chicago Bulls team led by Michael Jordan. So, the Houston Rockets team, I guess you could say it was unlikely that a 1997 Houston Rockets team would have been able to beat Michael Jordan and his Chicago Bulls teams. So yeah, the 1997 Rockets weren't able to live up to their hype, but it was a pretty cool big three, I'm not gonna lie. Clyde Drexler, Hakeem Olajuwon, and Charles Barkley. Number four, the 2015-16 Golden State Warriors. Now, it is debatable. Were this past season's Warriors technically considered a super team? Well, who knows, but they're on this list anyway because some of the other teams on this list, I guess you could say, didn't really have a super team. But I'm sort of just going off the word super team if the team had some pretty solid talent on their roster. And yeah, this year's Golden State Warriors team had some pretty awesome talent. Clay Thompson, Stephen Curry, Draymond Green. Yeah, it's a pretty solid team, right? I mean, it's just gotten better adding Kevin Durant, but this team won 73 games without him, so they were clearly pretty damn good. They, however, like the rest of the other teams on this list, didn't ultimately end up winning a title. And with 73 wins to your name and not getting a championship in the same year, it sort of means that they weren't the greatest team of all time. And this is why it was a pretty big fail, in my opinion. Will they get one with Kevin Durant on the court? Well, time will tell, but if history is any indication of a championship, I guess it's no certainty. So let me know down below, do you think Kevin Durant will bring the Warriors a ring? I mean, does he need to bring them a ring? I mean, for his sake he does, but do the Warriors need a ring? I'd say that the Warriors would take a ring though. Anyway, let's get on to number three. Number three, the 2003-04 LA Lakers. The stacked LA Lakers team of the 2003-04 season is often looked at as the prime example of super teams failing to live up to their hype on paper. Similar to the 96-97 Rockets, the Lakers had a successful combination with Shaq and Kobe, bringing the LA Lakers three consecutive championship trophies. After a couple of disappointing seasons where they underperformed and other teams had adjusted to their firepower, the Lakers decided to add a few legends to their lineup to increase their chances at seeing championship rings again. The Lakers would sign Gary Payton and Karl Malone, who after having their stellar careers respectively as part of the Seattle Supersonics and Utah Jazz, wanted to put their egos aside and just try to collect a championship ring. A lot of NBA fans at that time were really against the move because they felt like the Lakers didn't really need any more help. But as we all know, it's on this list for one reason, it was a fail. Most fans thought that anything less than a championship ring with that cast of legendary talent would be an utter failure. And that is why they're on this list. The Lakers would have an up and down season, 
hampered by injuries, chemistry issues, and off-court drama between the stars, particularly Kobe and Shaq, and even legal issues when Kobe found himself in the middle of rape allegations that tarnished his image, well, during that season at least. All of this would prove too much for the team. Even with advancing to the NBA Finals, the Lakers would fall short to the Detroit Pistons in an epic collapse. And although people may say that Karl Malone and Gary Payton didn't contribute much since they were old, well, they actually did. They contributed quite a bit. And Gary Payton actually ended up going to the Miami Heat like two seasons later and getting a ring with Dwayne Wade and Shaquille O'Neal. So there you go. Gary Payton got his ring. And Karl Malone, well, he never got one. So I'm sure that he wishes this Lakers team could have figured it out, but unfortunately for him, this was another NBA Finals that was a fail. And this is ultimately why the 2004 Lakers are on this list. Number two, the 2013-14 Los Angeles Lakers. Yeah, another Lakers team. With Kobe Bryant and Pau Gasol leading the team, the Lakers would finally see championship success once again with back-to-back -back NBA championship victories in 2009 and 2010. With Kobe getting up there in age and time running out for him to be able to play at a high level, the Lakers decided to go all out in the 2012-13 season to try and make a run at another championship and perhaps also secure their future with a marquee player for Kobe Bryant to pass the torch to. They tried to get Chris Paul down to LA and unfortunately, David Stern vetoed the trade to get Chris Paul to the Los Angeles Lakers, which I'm sure that most LA fans are pretty unhappy about right now because Kobe Bryant, he could have had six rings if it wasn't for David Stern. Anyway, this torch bar was thought to be Dwight Howard, who was acquired from the Orlando Magic via trade. To increase their chances even further, the Lakers would sign two-time MVP point guard Steve Nash and defensive stopper Meta World Peace, giving the Lakers offensive and defensive firepower only seen in, well, NBA 2K or basketball fantasy leagues. The season would be an absolute disaster as injuries would pile up, coaching changes would be made mid-season and chemistry issues, particularly between two players, uh, yeah, who was it again? Oh, oh that's right, Kobe and Dwight. Well, they would fill up the sports headlines day in and day out. To make matters worse, Kobe would tear his Achilles heel just before the playoffs. And after losing in the first round and chemistry issues with Kobe, Dwight Howard said, get me the hell out of here, and he joined Houston. And number one, you're probably thinking, what NBA team would be at number one? Haven't they already been said? Well, not all of them have been said, but this team isn't an NBA team. But I had to put them on this list. Number one, the 2004 USA Olympic team. Yeah, I know, this isn't an NBA team, but I had to put them on this list. Let me just start by saying no USA team should lose in the Olympics, but okay, it does happen occasionally. I get it. Some teams shouldn't lose and they just end up losing, similar to most of the teams on this list. But they got the bronze medal, and no USA team should ever get a bronze medal in basketball, especially with this many stars to one team. Now, USA is literally basketball. America is the highest quality basketball you can have. Not only that, this 2004 Olympic team had some of the best players in the league playing for them, and they were extremely unsuccessful, and this is probably one of the biggest fails of all time. The NBA stars on this team are the best of the best, and they couldn't pull it together. This is literally a super team. As the USA team was coming off gold medal performances in each of the last three Olympic Games in 1992, 1996, and 2000. The 2004 Olympic team had amazing superstars in LeBron James, Carmelo Anthony, and Dwayne Wade along with established stars in Tim Duncan, Allen Iverson, and some other incredible talent. But the group was unable to continue their run of international dominance losing to Puerto Rico, Lithuania, and Argentina on their way to winning a bronze medal. The fact that they didn't even get silver is still a question to me, but hey, I guess it just wasn't meant to be. Not going to lie though, I'm pretty excited for this year's Olympic Games coming up. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I just want to start off by thanking each of you guys for the ongoing support each and every video. You know that I really, really appreciate it. If you guys haven't subscribed yet, I make a whole bunch of NBA videos and I'm super excited to be posting NBA 2K17 when it drops. 
Lastly, I use an article off the sportstur.com and they have some awesome NBA related content on that site. So I'll drop a link in the description box down below. Anyway, if you guys enjoy this video, I'd honestly appreciate it if you'd be willing to drop a like on this video. And yeah, lastly, comment down below. Do you think that we will see the 2016-17 Golden State Warriors on this list? Or do you think they'll win a ring next season? I know it's pretty hard to tell just yet, but it'd be really interesting to see what you guys think before the season actually starts. So it's sort of like your prediction to see whether the Warriors will make the NBA Finals and win it, or even make the NBA Finals and lose it. Anyway, I'm out guys. Peace.